<laughs> All right, well, Fellowship, we are entering into a new era. Welcome uh, to Hila Gimpel to the Fellowship. Um, we opened up for questions and answers, and a lot of the questions had to do with parenting, with children, with family, and I just wanted to bring the expert here. Expert. Okay. So hi guys, so nice to meet everyone. Um, uh, I've really been enjoying getting feedback by email and questions and kind of getting to know some of you. Um, there's a question that keeps um, coming up in different, you know, different forms and permutations and it's about what do we do about kids that aren't following in our path? You know, it, it, as part of this fellowship, I'm sure that a lot of you have this feeling that you're, you know, starting a journey with Hashem or in the middle of a journey with Hashem and we're really lit up we're inspired we're excited and then it doesn't always transfer to the kids it doesn't always transfer to the kids you know you might have a bunch of kids and one of them is not really into it you might be the only one who's getting fired up for Torah and the rest of your family is just kind of looking at you like what's happening with mom what's happening with dad so what do we do about kids that aren't following the same fa uh, you know faith path, the journey that we're on. Um, that's something that, keeps, that's something that keeps coming up. And I think we also you know, relate with that as a family. I've yet to meet um, a family, uh, neither Jewish or from the nations, that doesn't at some point have some kind of struggle with, you know, with this issue, with, you know, with your kids. How do, you, how do you get them excited and inspired for the things that you're excited and inspired for? And what do you do when they're not? What do you do when they're not? Um, you know, Jeremy and I sometimes laugh, you know, when we'll see a family that we're like, oh, that family's perfect. They don't have any struggles with their kids. And over the years, we've learned to just say, wait for it, wait for it. Because, you know, it, everyone, at least that we know, seems to have, uh, seems to have, you know, this issue that they have to deal with in some way or another. Um, and what is the, what is the right way to look at that, you know, internally? How do we deal with that? How do we, how do we deal with our kids? And how do we deal with our own feelings of, shame and inadequacy around, you know, things that didn't exactly turn out the way we planned with our kids. What do we, what do we do with that? So I'm going to tell you at least my fundamental prism through which I see things. And then I'll give it over to the expert, maybe with a little bit more detail. Um, the story of Judah is the foundational story of the Jewish people. He's the father of King David. He's like the leader. He is the king. And you see the story of Judah is a story of self-discovery. They sell Joseph. Judah literally has an identity crisis. He leaves the family cuts himself off from the destiny of Israel, goes down, it says multiple times, to Adulam, becomes intermingled with, with prostitutes, intermingled with non-Jews, and I'll just, he's like, he's out. He is off the path. And Jacob and his family are just like, what do they do? And then it's a whole process for Judah to actually find his way back into the fold, to take his place within Jewish destiny, to take his place within the family. And I think that that is a blueprint for all of us, that every child needs to find their own way then we have our way and we found our own way and we've paved our own path in our own lives and then the best way for a child to really grow into himself is he's going to have to make mistakes he's going to have to go down and he's going to have to find his own way back uh, into the family and into the destiny of israel and i think that that's like very comforting to realize that uh, every person has their own faith journey and as the children kind of grow and evolve they're going to find their own way and that's not something to like be embarrassed of that's just the blueprint of how the world works i would take it even further i would say the entire book of Bereshi, the entire book of genesis is really a story of parents struggling with this right you have avram struggling with ishmael you have yitzhak struggling with asa you have yaakov struggling with all of his kids right it's like it's like that's it's not it's not the exception it's almost it's almost the rule um and before the before the torah even gives us you know, before the Torah even tells us about the laws and, you know, gives us the Ten Commandments, it's already setting out for us, get ready. Even when, you know, even in the, the, the greatest giants, the, the founders of our, the founders of our faith, they struggled with this. It's not, you know, that, that for me kind of takes away that element of, oh, you know, shame, what's wrong with me? Why, you know, why isn't my kid behaving the way that I wanted? If you know that, that all of our fathers struggled with this and, and their, you know, their story is, is really the blueprint for all of our reality, I think that kind of settles down that, that feeling. And also to realize that the epic legendary stories of the patriarchs and matriarchs of Israel, all of us have our own stories that are unfolding, and we have kind of a model that with these challenges, 
Uh, sometimes a merger is the most beautiful of all stories. Yeah. Something interesting is that in Hebrew, the word for parent is hore. And, um, you know, hore comes from the, from the root of herayon. Herayon is to be pregnant. From what I know, um, and we have, you guys are from how many different countries? 24. 24 different countries. So you guys can tell me about your languages, but I'm pretty sure that Hebrew is the only language where the word for parent actually means pregnant. In Hebrew, it, mean, it, it teaches us that your entire parenting career, and it doesn't matter if your kids are 2, 20, or 40, your entire parenting career is kind of like an ongoing pregnancy. Just because the kid is out of your body doesn't mean that you're done with a pregnancy. Because what's a pregnancy? When you're pregnant, you know, your, your baby is developing and you don't rush it. You never meet some, you know, mom who's saying, you know, I really hope my baby's born prematurely because I just, you know, want to, want to get them, get them out because you know that inside your baby still has stages to develop. And so the Hebrew language, I think, is teaching us to look at our entire parenting career like that. You know, you're never going to say, okay, you know, you're 10 years old, you're 18 years old, you're 25 years old. I expect you to be, you know, done and fully baked. You're on a journey. It's, a, it's an ongoing pregnancy where each stage has its development. And to have this expectation that at any certain stage, your child is going to be completely done developing and becoming who they are, um, it's, it's just, it's an unrealistic expectation. And that sort of also for me gives, gives um, you know, the right, a healthy kind of perspective on, um, on how, to see, how to see your child's development. And even in that, hurrah to teach Horeb to parent, Herayon, and Torah itself mm. is all saying this is all just a pregnancy. We're all within this womb of like uh, mercy. Rechem is mercy, but it's also like a place of growth. It's a place of like just giving a safe space to allow the child to like find them, find their own way. Yeah. And um, with that, um, you know, I was uh, studying, there's a prayer of the uh, Shla Kadosh, of the uh, um, Yeshayahu Alevi Horovitz, who was one of the greatest um, spiritual leaders and Torah scholars of Ashkenaz in the 17th century, um, he wrote a prayer. I'm going to try to send it out to everybody by email. I actually found a translation of it into English as well. Um, he wrote a prayer for parents to say over their children, and it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful prayer. And just having, you know, he teaches us that just every, you know, every child needs prayers. Our children need our prayers. Um, and an interesting thing that he says within, within the prayer that he wrote was, uh, and it connects to what we were just talking about, about uh, Genesis, is that he says, may we all, you know, you know, live, um, you know, merit to eternal life before you, Hashem. And you know what verse he, he quotes? He quotes the verse, he says, Lu lefanecha, right? May he live before you. Who is he talking about when he says, may he live before you? When does that show up in the Bible? Busted. I don't know. Of course you do. Yishmael. Okay. Right? Lu panecha, right? When he says, may he live before you, when Hashem says, you know, I'm going to give you Yitzchak, right? He says, may, may Yishmael live before you, right? And so it's, I think it's so interesting that within his prayer, he doesn't quote um, a verse about one of the children that were like the top, you know, the top contenders for being the greatest successes in the Bible, right? He quotes, he quotes Avram talking about Ishmael, meaning that desire that Avram had for Ishmael to, you know, successfully live a God-fearing life in front of Hashem, that was like a sort, that was a source of inspiration for the Shla in that prayer. Hmm. I think that connects kind of with what we were talking about. So I, uh, I just love that prayer. I'm going to send you guys out um, a copy of it. Um, and another thing that I think gives us a lot of um, kind of strength in this, in, in our, in our, gives us you know, for me, that's, it's a really important thing in our parenting journey is, um, is Torah study with each kid. Something interesting that, um, about the, uh, about Maimonides, Maimonides writes in the, um, laws of Torah study, uh, you would think that in the laws of Torah study, the first law would be study the Torah, right? Wouldn't that make sense? It's the laws of Torah study. Interestingly, the commandment to study Torah actually only shows up in the eighth law that Maimonides brings. You know what the first ones are about? Studying with your children. Studying with your children. I mean, you would think that it's like, okay, you study, you have a lot to impart to your children, and then, you know, the Rambam would say, teach that to your children. He goes in the opposite direction. He says, study with your children. Study Torah with your children, 
And then later on, he says, learn Torah for yourself. So for me, that, that, that teaches me something so um, fundamental. It's like, you can learn on your own, that's great. But the real learning process comes from learning with your children. When you sit and try to, you know, crack something open and make it accessible for your child and meet them in the place where they are, um, it's, it's a greater Torah study than just getting fired up yourself. Something really interesting happened to us on Shavuot. We were, um, you know, we were trying to study with our children. I said to each kid, I said, I really want you guys to find the Torah book that, you know, the Torah field that, that speaks to you the most. And we're going we're gonna to learn with each child the thing that interests him most. It's Shavuot. We're going to have individual special Torah study time with each kid. And so, you know, so our son Akiva said, I want to learn, you know, he wanted to learn the prophets. Great. So we're learning prophets with him. Eden says, we want to learn, uh, I want to learn um, you know, prayer. So we're studying, you know, we're studying the Sidur together. With little Noam, we were learning the Tzitzit book about Tzitzit because he's four and you know, he just started wearing Tzitzit last year. And then with our oldest son, who seems to be uh, one of our, one of our, um, least inspired. No, 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 that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say <laughs> one of our, one of our dear friends in the fellowship who I've been writing, you know, I've been emailing back and forth with on this subject. She told me, she shared with me the idea of individuating that, Adolescents, teenagers, young adults, they need to individuate and they need to kind of find their own individual identity. So with our oldest, it seems like everything that we're excited about in Torah is the opposite of what interests him in Torah, right? If, if at all, right? So, so then I, I kind of came up and I was like, hey, you know, you wanna, what do you want to learn? And Jeremy and I, we're all about learning the, you know, the mystical teachings and the prayer and the, and the spiritual and the prophets. And I was, I kind of thought he was just going to brush me off and be like, nah. He goes, yeah, I want to learn. I said, what do you want to learn? He goes, I want to learn the law. I want to learn halacha. And I said, okay, which halacha? And he goes, I want to learn the law of the sabbatical year. The, the working of the fields, how do you, how you're allowed to work the fields in the sabbatical year. Now the sabbatical year is in like another year and a half. He's like, I want to prepare for the sabbatical year. And I'm thinking to myself, Okay, so I go to the shelf and I find a book about the Jewish laws and we are just learning together chapter after chapter of how you're allowed to pull up weeds in the sabbatical year that's going to be in another year and a half, right? It, Jeremy was like... <laughs> I was shocked that he wanted to learn anything at all. And then, of course, he chooses like the one topic that is like... It's like the least That's us, not our right? thing. It's like not us, but whatever, right? We were so happy. And, and it reminded me of you know, the Talmud says that that when Hashem's, when the Torah, um, the Torah comes down into the world, it's like a, it's like a, um, a hammer hitting a rock, right? Sparks go out everywhere. It says there's 70 faces to the Torah. There are 70, 70 ways in which the Torah comes into the world. And each person has their own spark. Each person has their own way. And so, um, for me, that was, you know, just showing how, how each kid has their own path in Torah. And it's, you know, instead of, us just trying to come and say, you know, this is the way of the Torah. Hashem says, no, there's 70 paths in the Torah, right? How can I kind of accompany you on your Torah path, which might be totally different, you know, might be totally different and not even look like a Torah path to me, but that doesn't mean it's not a Torah path. There's just, you know, there's just so many ways that that can express itself um, in the world. And so... That's the answer on one foot for that question so for a few now. Thoughts. It's definitely not an answer. And it's this like is the like beginning an, of... yeah, This is like an ongoing conversation. But I think that remembering that uh, the children, they're not us. They kind of come through us. And that yeah. they have to find their own path in the world. And that uh, everyone should be blessed to help their children find their own path in the world. And when their path seems like they're going all the way in the other direction, just realize that that's a part of their journey as well. All right.